Hello, welcome back. I'm Savalian, a software dev slash creative. Typically I do videos about software, game development, creativity, but today I'm gonna do a product review. Now, I don't usually do product reviews here because I don't really wanna just buy stuff so I can talk about whether people should buy them. <laughs> uh, that's not really my thing, but Sometimes I do product reviews of things that I have, especially if they're big ticket items, uh, and especially if I think a review would be helpful to other people. And today I have exactly the thing. It's a vacuum. A Dyson specifically, which I know are like the, the fancy vacuum. This one is the Dyson V15 Detect. And the reason I'm holding it kind of like this is that this vacuum doesn't stand up on its own, which I'll talk about later. But basically, this is a very expensive cordless Dyson vacuum. I think it retails for about $700, but you, you know, Amazon always does this like, they'll put it on sale one week and then the next week it'll be a little bit more. So the pricing on these guys does seem to change quite a bit, but um, it's about a $700 vacuum. So it's a significant purchase. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I chose to get the Dyson V15 Detect. And first of all, I'll mention I did buy this. It's not sponsored, it's not a gift. Uh, I just bought it because I wanted it. Uh, a couple of reasons why I bought this vacuum as opposed to a cheaper vacuum. The first one is that we have three cats and one dog and a bird, uh, and then two adult humans living in this house and it's a decent sized house. It's about 1800 square feet. We pretty much have to vacuum every week or it gets really bad. And something to look forward to in this video, I'm gonna be doing some vacuuming. And when I started vacuuming, I had not vacuumed the house in about three months because we are having our kitchen remodeled after some flooding and the entire house has been in shambles since December. It's March 16th and the kitchen is still not fully functional yet. So I just haven't had the time to really clean anything outside of what was like necessary and daily. And then part two, this vacuum, which was our previous vacuum, uh, we found out was actually recalled in 2015 for electrocuting people. So I didn't want to use that anymore because I didn't want to get electrocuted. That's why I started shopping for vacuums in the first place. And, and even though this vacuum, the Shark whatever, I'll put the model on the screen if I remember it, even though it was, you know, two or three hundred dollars, it wasn't a super great vacuum. It was just kind of okay. I really wanted to get something that was gonna last me a long time. And since like even middle of the road vacuums seem to cost about $300, I figured $700 would be worth it to get something that's going to really be powerful and make cleaning easier. So the third kind of reason I got the Dyson is because I don't like vacuuming. I hate vacuuming. It is time consuming and I hate cleaning out the canister and I hate everything about vacuuming, but it is incredibly necessary for this house. So I wanted to get one that would be easy to use and maybe you know, miraculously make me not hate vacuuming. So that's kind of the backstory about why I got it and what I got. And now we're gonna flip around to the voiceover, talk about all the things that come with this vacuum, what it can do, and then whether I think those features are worth uh, buying at $700. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I have the Dyson V15 Detect. This is a cordless vacuum, so it does run on battery power. I'll talk more about that later. And the neat thing about this vacuum that might be common to other cordless ones, I have no idea, this is the first cordless vacuum I've ever used, uh, but the thing is that this body of the vacuum is totally independent of any attachments. So the, all the vacuums I've used before have these sort of big bodies built around the canister and the floor brush, and then Usually there's like a tube you can pull out, you can attach special tools to. This one instead has this connector at the bottom of the canister and like the motor, I guess. And you can attach whatever you want to this, whether that is the floor attachment or any of the other like five attachments that it comes with. And speaking of attachments, what did this one come with? So 
The first thing it did come with was the battery wall mount thing. Um, it's just like a piece of plastic with a hole you can put the plug into so that when you drop the vacuum into it, it does plug in to charge. Uh, and this, they want you to put this in the wall. I actually ordered a third party stand because I didn't really want to drill into my wall and decide that the vacuum would be in just one spot uh, forever. Um, it wasn't here at the beginning of the video. It hadn't arrived yet, but I, it's here now so I can add some video of that. And it's actually very important um, to have either the wall mount or the stand because the vacuum does not stand up on its own. The top is very heavy and the floor pieces don't like click into place the way a lot of other like floor wired vacuums do. Uh, so just a little bit of warning on that. You'll want to lay it down gently. Uh, it did take a little tumble and I saw my life flash before my eyes uh, when I dropped the vacuum on tile the first week I had it, but it appears unharmed. Uh, nothing has been cracked or anything. So just a warning, do not try to lean this against the wall like I did because it may fall over. But this vacuum does come with two different floor brushes, one for carpets and one for hard floors. The one for carpets is pretty standard. It has the spinning bit inside, brushes up the dirt and the hair and stuff. Uh, but this one does this cool corkscrew thing that is intended to prevent hair from getting tangled in the brush. And this is very cool for me. Uh, not only do we have pet hair, we have my human hair, and then also our carpets have been so shredded by the cat and dog claws that sometimes carpet strings get pulled out and tangled in the vacuum, and that hasn't happened with this one so far. I've done a lot of vacuuming with it, and I've definitely pulled up some carpet strings, uh, but because they have this corkscrew thing, I guess the hair just goes around it. So that's neat. The hard floor brush is actually really cool too. Uh, I thought this would be a stupid gimmick. That was my first impression when I saw this in like the ad pictures and things like that, but it has this green laser that shines out from the front of the vacuum and it shows you all the dust. And like I said, I thought this was silly and I thought like, why would they put this on here? They just wanted to make it sciency with the laser. But when I used it on our office floors, it actually really shows like which part of the floor is dusty. And you can kind of see, you know, I'm not a good vacuumer. I don't like vacuuming, so I haven't really perfected my technique. Like, it's very easy to see a, a little spot I might have missed, or if, uh, for example, I have these ferns in my office now, and sometimes they drop little leaves, and sometimes the air from the vacuum will make them drop leaves as in vacuuming, and this little light helped me see where they had fallen. I don't know. I think it's really nice. Uh, the other thing is it also illuminates dirt that you cannot vacuum up, so in our office we have our dog is in here, he drools sometimes, his drool and his, his grubby paws get markings on the floor, and that illuminates with the laser as well, but we can't vacuum that up. I'm gonna have to get the Swiffer out and Swiffer that up, but it, it's a really cool feature, and I didn't think it would be. So that's kind of my review, is that the green laser on the hard floor brush is actually a lot cooler than you expect. And we also have plans to redo our downstairs, which is currently carpet with hardwood floors or, you know, hard something floors, vinyl, whatever. God only knows if we will ever have the money to do that with all the bullshit that we've had to go through with our house lately. In the event that that happens, this vacuum will still be very useful. It's kind of an all-purpose vacuum with all these different attachments. You can use it wherever you need it, basically. Uh, so getting into the rest of the attachments before we do some, like, demos, uh, we also have a little version of the carpet brush. They call this the hair screw tool. Uh, it's really just a tiny version of the floor like carpet brush. I used it on the stairs, it was pretty effective, uh, but because this vacuum doesn't come with like a tube like some do, um, it's a little hard to maneuver the the attachments in like a stairs situation where sometimes you want to turn them to the side. You can get one for the vacuum I believe, but I, I didn't have one so just a little warning on that. The next three attachments are all little like dusting brushes. This first one has very stiff bristles, 
And I believe it is for scrubbing things that are like stuck on something that you're vacuuming. I thought it might also be good for that like dark edge of dust around the edge of the carpet. Maneuvering this was kind of difficult because what I really wanted was a long skinny stiff brush um, but because this one's kind of oval shaped I had to really work it into the corner and it didn't work exactly as well as I hoped but I think it did something for it to get some of the cat hair out of the corner of the room so this one you could probably find a, a good use for it. The next brush is what they call the combination tool. It has a brush on it and this little mechanism that I didn't really understand at first, but you can slide the brush up or down. So I guess sometimes people use just the, the hard bit, like another crevice tool, but it's bigger. And then if you slide it down, you can use the brush. I don't really know why this tool exists, but I have it. And uh, I really just like the brush part. It's a good size for dusting in my opinion. So that's kind of what I use it for. And then there's another soft brush that the website actually says is like for dusting. It works pretty well, um, but just like the hair screw tool, it's kind of difficult to maneuver when it's attached like right onto the vacuum. You can't get it into some smaller places and you can put it on the end of the long tube, but you really have to get the right angle. So I was able to get under some furniture with some of these things, but not others. And then finally, there's the crevice tool. This is a normal vacuum tool. I think every vacuum I've ever had has had one of these. Uh, just a long tube with a taper at the end, uh, meant for little, little skinny spots that you need to vacuum out. I also got this wand clip. I don't really know what to do with it. I think it goes on the tube and holds the attachments. Uh, because there's so many, I just kind of carry them around with me. What I really need is like a utility belt. <laughs> because I kind of go between all of these, especially as I'm learning how all this works. Now let's talk about the vacuuming experience. I can't remember if I mentioned. Before we got this vacuum, I had not vacuumed at the house at all in about three months, partially because I'm lazy, but partially because we've had uh, home renovations. So the house is in a bit of a state, but I think this is going to be great for vacuuming because the difference is going to be very powerful. And speaking of powerful things, this vacuum is insanely powerful. It is brand new, so I can't speak to how it will age or what how the experience will change as it gets a little bit older, but it's way more powerful than our previous vacuum, which I believe was a Shark NV652. If you want to know what vacuum we had, just Google Shark Vacuum Recall and it comes right up. <laughs> Um, we cleaned out that vacuum regularly and swapped the filters, but it was about 10 years old. So this vacuum is a huge step up. Even, you know, three months of cat hair caked onto the floors came up in just like one or two passes of the floor brush, uh, which does bring us to our first con of this vacuum. The canister is pretty small. Now our floors were extremely dirty. Hopefully they're not this dirty all the time, but as they were, I could not vacuum very much of this at all before having to empty the bin. When I did the stairs, for example, you know, three months of stairs cat hair, I could get about two full steps vacuumed before I had to empty it. And the canister looks bigger than it is. It has this max fill line at about the halfway point. Uh, I don't know if I got a good video of that, but um, you do have to empty it or the hair and the dirt and stuff will get up above this little rubber divider and it will make it harder to empty. But on the bright side, the, the emptying the dirt is pretty easy. There's this little handle on the outside of the canister. You push it and it just like shoots the dirt out the end. <laughs> it's very important to make sure you're lined up with the trash can before you do this or you're going to have dirt everywhere. Um, the only thing is you can't close the vacuum with the handle. You have to sort of close it with your hand or like by pressing it on the edge of the trash can or something. So they call this hands free, but it's only hands free to empty it and this little end bit does get dust on it. I guess it's not perfect, <laughs> but it is, it is pretty good. Emptying it is really neat. And then if you do get hair up above that little rubber bit, like I did a couple times, um, you can either just keep pushing it back and pulling it out. Sometimes the hair can like wiggle back out. Uh, or 
if you have it in emptying mode, there's a little red tab on the bottom of the canister and that will pop off this plastic part around the outside. And that's, I assume, how you clean it, you know, when you do like a proper cleaning of the vacuum. I haven't really gotten to that point yet where I clean the canister and like change the filter and stuff, but I believe that's how you do it. And uh, then you can just like scoop the hair out and put it right back on. And I just want to put a word of warning. I probably should have put this at the beginning of the video so people would hear it for sure. This vacuum has a trigger that you hold when vacuuming and the trigger is very easy to press. <laughs> sometimes, you know, because the handle of the vacuum is right next to the trigger, of course, sometimes I hit the trigger without meaning to. So for this vacuum, I really recommend gun safety rule number one or number two, whatever it is, you know, don't put your finger on or near the trigger unless you're ready to fire the vacuum. I don't, you know, I don't know how bad it could be if you have like your hand in the canister or something if you start it up. Uh, just, let's just not find out, okay? Uh, so I've been making a habit of like putting my hand in that little space below the trigger when I'm not actively vacuuming. Um, I, I honestly don't know why it works like this. It seems a little bit weird to me. Maybe there's some kind of precedent or some kind of reason why they do it this way, but it seems a little bit strange. Like our old vacuum had a, a big clicky button that you had to like really press to start and stop the vacuum. So I don't know why they did this, but just a little word of warning there. And over the next few weeks, I did a lot of vacuuming and I kind of just would get the vacuum out and vacuum little spaces in the house when I had time because we still have all of our kitchen stuff in our living room. I really couldn't do like a full living room vacuum. I had to kind of go around these little pathways that we've carved in between all the pots and pans and stuff. So I don't have a great idea of how it works on like a whole house clean. But uh, I have done like entire rooms or like the whole stairs at once or things like that. And next I want to talk about the little graphs. So on the vacuum, this is like one of their selling points. So if you've looked this vacuum up before, you've probably seen it. There's this tiny screen in the top of the vacuum and you can use this little button to change what mode the vacuum runs in. I think medium is like the automatic mode, so I usually put it on that. Uh, and then, as you're vacuuming, it shows these graphs that indicate how much dirt you've slurped up and like how big the dirt particles are. And they explain what all this means on their website and how they do this. They do it with sound somehow. I won't pretend I'm a vacuum physics expert, but what I was really interested in seeing is that if the floor is clean, do these numbers actually stop going up? And the results of my little experiment were gross and inconclusive. <laughs> so what I did was I vacuumed a small patch of carpet near the front door just over and over again. And if you ever want to reset the dirt count, which I did between each of these passes, uh, you can either pull the battery out for 15 seconds, which is a little button, you can just eject the battery, or you can charge the vacuum normally and it will reset then. Um, so I vacuumed this little patch I looked at the graph, I showed it to the camera to get a record of it, reset the count, vacuumed the patch again, showed the graph, and so on. And I thought I would eventually stop getting dirt out of the floor, and then I would be able to say like, oh, well, there's no dirt but the graph has gone up, or there's no dirt and the graph has stopped ticking up. But what actually happened was I just kept getting more dirt out of the carpet. Uh, obviously the cat hair stopped after the first, like, maybe two passes. Um, but I kept getting this, like, fine beige color dirt. And I don't know if this is actual dirt that's just been embedded in the carpet for, like, the past decade that the vacuum is getting loose. Or if it was maybe tiny par carpet particles that were getting worn away off the carpet. Or I don't know what this is, but it was this fine beige dust and it like I've vacuumed probably six times in this one little spot and it just kept finding more dirt so that experiment was inconclusive 
because my carpets are disgusting. Uh, maybe I'll try again with a hard floor. I don't know if I will do that, if I'll have time, but um, that was kind of wild. And as far as battery life goes, which I think is maybe the most important thing people want to know about when they're switching to a cordless vacuum, I had no idea how long these things would last, that the marketing copies is up to 60 minutes, but you know, that's definitely just a number that they made up. <laughs> Um, but what I did find was that usually my weak physical body ran out of energy before the vacuum did. There's a little time on the screen that shows how much estimated battery time you have left. And it changes as you vacuum on different surfaces. So on really rough, dirty carpet, it goes way down. It's around like 15-20 minutes. If you're on hard floors or on like a smoother carpet that's not as... I don't know the word, textured, um, it will go up maybe like 20 to 30 minutes. In my experience, I found that I could usually vacuum for at least 20 minutes straight without running out of battery. The true test will be when I do have the whole living room back. It's a pretty big living room uh, and I would try to vacuum it all in one go. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do that in this video, but from what I can tell, it seems perfectly adequate. I never ran out of battery. Maybe I got close, I don't know, but um, I always had enough battery to do the vacuuming I wanted to do. And then I just pop it right back on the charger and even, you know, just 20, 30 minutes of charging and I could go again and it was, it was basically full. So I think if you're in a similar sized house, I've got it about 1800 square feet. It's got three bedrooms, a pretty sizable living room. Uh, and I feel like the battery life was totally fine. So if you're in like a smaller apartment or a smaller house, I think it's, I think it's going to be perfect. I think there's going to be plenty of battery life on this guy. Now, did I miss anything? I'm not sure. Uh, I also did order the official Dyson pet grooming attachment. I'm going to try it on my sweet pupper Crowley. He's usually okay around vacuums. He gets a little bit uneasy. But I'm hoping with some treats, I'll be able to groom him with the special vacuum brush uh, because he is a husky slash German shepherd. So he has a lot of hair. He has that double coat and he sheds profusely twice a year when he blows his coat. So it'll be really nice if that ends up working. I'm sure I will still run into canister size issues, but uh, I don't have that ready for this video. Let me know if you'd like to see me try to vacuum the dog. No promises because I'm still not sure if he'll let me do it or not. But if you want to see it, I will try to get it on video and try to do a little review on that as well. But that's pretty much all my thoughts on the Dyson V15 Detect. A brief recap, uh, this is a very powerful vacuum. Just on that alone, I would say that if you do need a new vacuum, this is a pretty good one. It does what a vacuum needs to do and it does it very well. Second, I really like the cordless modular design. I was hoping it would make vacuuming a lot easier and I, I think it does. It's fairly light. I do still get tired of holding it up if I'm using it for like dusting where my arm is kind of extended a little bit more, but it's much lighter than any other vacuum I've had. Uh, three, it comes with a lot of useful attachments. They're very easy to swap, uh, but they are kind of hard to manage if you're moving to different rooms in a house. Like, it doesn't have anything to easily carry the attachments around. The wand clip holds two, and it only holds ones that kind of lay flat. Like, for example, I couldn't get the mini floor brush. What was that called? The hair screw tool. I couldn't get that in the wand clip because it was a little bit too bulky. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll get like a bucket or something to throw all the attachments in. Uh, four, the canister is pretty small and fills up fast. So if you have very large areas to vacuum or a very, very dirty home like I do, maybe not the best choice. Um, unfortunately, the only cordless Dyson I saw with a bigger canister was just insanely expensive. It was like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars and that's the outsize version of the V15 or maybe it's not a V15 but it definitely had outsize on the name. Um, so that's kind of a, a con but I don't think it's like a 
serious, like definitely don't get it. I just think you have to manage your your vacuuming. Maybe get a little can to bring with you around the house to dump the dirt in. I don't know. I was thinking about doing that. And then five, battery life seems decent. I think it'll be perfectly adequate for, you know, the average size house or definitely good for an apartment or a studio even. Like, you could probably vacuum an entire studio on one battery. Like, I, I'm, I'm certain that you could. Dusting and everything. So that would be, that would be really nice. So there it is. The Dyson V15 Detect. My new vacuum. I hope this review was helpful and I hope that seeing me vacuum up three months of cat and dog hair was really satisfying. I love stuff like this. I've been watching a lot of power washing videos lately. It's kind of the same thing. Maybe a little bit. But if you are new here, I typically do game development, art, creative lifestyle videos. So be sure to subscribe if you're into any of that. Uh, no hard feelings if you're not. But I'll be back soon with another video and I hope to see you there. Bye bye!